Welcome back to the Optimal Anesthesia, where we explore critical topics in anesthesiology. Today, we're discussing the three most common nerve injuries during anesthesia. Understanding these injuries, their causes, prevention, and management is essential for every anesthesiologist. Let's start with an overview. Nerve injuries, although rare, can significantly impact patient recovery and satisfaction. The most frequently encountered nerve injuries are the ulnar nerve, brachial plexus, and common peroneal nerve. So, what are the incidences? Studies show these injuries occur in about 0.03% to 0.1% of anesthetized patients. First up is the ulnar nerve injury. This is the most common, with an incidence of 0.02% to 0.04%. Next, the brachial plexus injury, with an incidence of 0.01% to 0.03%. Lastly, the common peroneal nerve injury, also with a 0.01% to 0.03% incidence. We'll be discussing the three main mechanisms behind these injuries, compression, stretch, and ischemia. So, let's get into it. First up, let's talk about compression. Imagine this, during a long surgical procedure, a patient's arm or leg might be in one position for an extended period. If there isn't enough padding, or if the positioning isn't quite right, pressure builds up on the nerves. This pressure reduces blood flow, causing the nerve to become oxygen-starved and damaged. Now, let's dive into stretch injuries. Stretch injuries occur when a nerve is pulled or stretched beyond its normal limits. This can happen if a limb is held in an awkward position for too long or if it's moved in ways that are not typical. For example, if an arm is held out to the side at a 90-degree angle or more, it might stretch the brachial plexus, a network of nerves that control arm and hand movements. Similarly, prolonged positions, like the Trendelenburg position, can stretch nerves in the lower body. Lastly, let's discuss ischemia. Ischemia happens when nerves don't get enough blood flow. It's often caused by compression but can also result from other factors. When a nerve is deprived of oxygen, it can suffer serious damage. Nerves are incredibly sensitive to changes in their blood supply, and even short periods of ischemia can lead to significant issues. We'll explore the pathophysiology behind these injuries, including how they happen and why they matter. Ready to get into the science? Let's go! First up is ischemia and hypoxia. Picture this, during surgery, if a nerve gets compressed or stretched, the blood vessels that supply it might get pinched off. This leads to ischemia, which is just a fancy term for reduced blood flow. When blood flow is restricted, the nerve gets less oxygen and nutrients, a condition known as hypoxia. Nerves are like high-maintenance cells, they need a constant supply of oxygen to function properly. Without it, they start to suffer, and can quickly become damaged or even die. Moving on to axonal injury. The axon is the nerve's electrical wiring, responsible for sending signals to and from the brain. If a nerve is compressed or stretched, this wiring can get damaged. Imagine trying to use a frayed electrical cord, it just doesn't work right. Similarly, a damaged axon disrupts the nerve's ability to transmit signals. This can cause a range of issues, from tingling sensations to loss of movement. Plus, this initial damage can set off a chain reaction, worsening the nerve injury over time. Now, let's talk about inflammation. When a nerve gets injured, your body's immune system springs into action. It sends inflammatory cells to the injured area to start the healing process. However, these cells release substances that can cause swelling, which might further compress the nerve. 
It's like having a balloon in a tight space, it gets squeezed even more. Inflammation can also break down the protective barrier around the nerve, allowing more inflammatory cells to invade and potentially prolong the injury. Next, we have demyelination. Many nerves are covered by a protective sheath called myelin, which helps speed up signal transmission. When this sheath gets damaged through compression, ischemia, or inflammation, the nerve's ability to send signals quickly and efficiently is compromised. This demyelination slows down or blocks nerve impulses, leading to symptoms like numbness and weakness. Finally, let's touch on neurochemical changes. Nerve injuries can mess with the chemicals that nerves use to communicate. This disruption can impair how nerves send signals to muscles and other nerves, affecting both movement and sensation. Additionally, these changes can make it harder for the nerve to repair itself, sometimes leading to chronic pain or long-term functional problems. Understanding these mechanisms is crucial for anyone involved in surgical care. By knowing how nerve injuries happen and what causes them, healthcare providers can better prevent these issues and manage them effectively if they do occur. What's the big deal with ulnar nerve injuries? Ulnar nerve injuries are a major concern in anesthesia-related malpractice claims. They make up about one-third of these cases, highlighting their significance. Although they're relatively rare, the consequences can be quite serious. Why do they happen? Several factors can increase the risk of ulnar nerve injuries. These include, one, a higher BMI can lead to altered positioning and increased pressure during surgery. Two, cancer patients might face additional risks due to prolonged procedures or existing nerve issues. Three, extended surgeries can lead to nerve compression and reduced blood flow. Four, improper or prolonged arm positioning, especially if arms are tucked or compressed, is a key risk factor. How can we manage and prevent these injuries? Here's what you need to know. 1. Regularly check for signs of nerve injury during and after surgery. A detailed neurological exam post-surgery can help catch issues early. 2. Proper positioning is crucial. Keep the arm in a neutral position and use adequate padding to avoid pressure on the nerve. Regularly reposition the patient to prevent sustained pressure. 3. Document any signs of injury and educate patients on symptoms to watch for. If needed, surgical interventions like neurography or nerve transfers can help repair severe injuries. 4. Physical therapy is essential for recovery. Regular follow-ups will ensure the patient is on track and adjust care as needed. 5. Work with specialists and the surgical team to refine techniques and improve positioning strategies. Next up is the brachial plexus. This network of nerves controls the muscles and sensation in the shoulder, arm, and hand. Injuries here are often more severe and can occur when the arm is excessively stretched or compressed during surgery. A review published in Clinical Anatomy 2021 emphasizes that brachial plexus injuries are frequently associated with high-risk surgeries, such as those involving shoulder or neck manipulation. The Regional Anesthesia and Pain Medicine Journal, 2015, also underscores the importance of avoiding extreme arm positioning to prevent these injuries. Common causes, excessive shoulder abduction or extension, direct trauma to the brachial plexus during surgery, Compression from surgical devices. Prevention tips, maintain proper arm positioning. Avoid excessive shoulder abduction. Use monitoring techniques to detect potential issues early. Finally, let's talk about common peroneal nerve injuries. This nerve runs down the outside of the knee and controls movements like dorsiflexion of the foot. Injuries here can result from pressure on the nerve or from improper positioning during surgery. 
Recent studies in anesthesia, 2018, indicate that common peroneal nerve injuries, while less frequent than ulnar or brachial plexus injuries, can still result in significant functional impairment. The key is to be aware of the positioning and pressure on the legs during and after surgery. The most common causes include pressure from the surgical table or equipment, prolonged knee flexion, or direct trauma. Risk factors include long procedures, improper positioning, and patient body habitus, 10, 11. To prevent these injuries, it's important to ensure proper positioning of the legs and avoid pressure on the lateral aspect of the knee. If a common peroneal nerve injury occurs, conservative management with physical therapy is often the first step. In some cases, surgical intervention may be necessary to repair the nerve or relieve pressure. So there you have it, an overview of the three most common nerve injuries associated with anesthesia, ulnar nerve, brachial plexus, and common peroneal nerve injuries. By understanding the causes, risk factors, and preventive strategies, we can better protect our patients and optimize outcomes. Thanks for tuning in to Optimal Anesthesia. Don't forget to subscribe and stay updated on our latest episodes. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe.